back end rotates really good. <laughs> Hi, people of the interwebs, it's your favorite bin and warehouse, Sarah here, back with another car review. And today I'm reviewing this 2020 Volkswagen GTI with a six-speed manual transmission. And it's the final year of the Mark 7. The new Mark 8 has already been revealed. The question is, should you buy the last year of the Mark 7 or just wait for the Mark 8? I think a wall just fell over back there. Starting out with the front end, this is the S trim level. It is a base model GTI with no options added to it. So it comes under $30,000. It has standard LED fog lights as well as LED daytime running lights, but it still has halogen headlights. And I mean, it is under 30 grand, but it's 2020, halogen headlights? I will say this though, the GTI is one of those cars that when a new generation comes out, somehow the previous generation looks even better than it did before. The Mark 8 is a good looking car, but the 7 just looks even better to me now that I've seen the 8, and I don't know why that happens, but it does. Oh man, that is so smart. There's a little manhole lid inside the wheel well that you can twist and remove to gain access to changing the fog light bulbs. That is smart. Oh, I bet you could open that up, remove the fog light, and then have a cooling duct for your brakes. You notice the brake calipers though are red and say GTI on them because those were once part of a package, a performance package. Now they're standard on this car. It took me quite a few years to notice this, but if you look at the shape of the C-pillar area and then the shape of the gas door, it's the same shape. It follows the body lines. Volkswagens do cool things with styling. I like that. The Mark 7 GTI and Golf R are kind of reverse mullets styling wise. It's party up front, but in the back it's straight business. And that's what a lot of people like about these cars. They're subtle. They don't stand out. They're not super flashy. I hope Volkswagen continues to do weird things like make the hatch opener your rear logo. That is so cool. I was pretty bummed out when they dropped the three-door version of the GTI and the Golf R because it was the same size car dimensionally. It just had less doors and the front ones were longer than they are in the five-door. Let me know in the comment section below, what do you prefer, a three-door hatch or a five-door hatch? I'm guessing most of you are gonna say a five-door because that's why they stopped making it. As far as the interior goes, you guys know I roll. I'm gonna keep it short, sweet, and to the simple. And I'm gonna point out to you the stuff that matters on the interior. I'm not gonna bore you to death by reading off a brochure. First thing you notice when you jump into a Volkswagen is the smell. It smells unmistakably like a VW in here. It's a good smell. It's not your typical new car smell. And this is YouTube and there's no way for you to smell it. So I'm sorry for that. It does not matter what other seat Volkswagen offers in a GTI. The plaid cloth base model seats are the way to go no matter what. Bolstering wise, it's good. Solid bolstering. They're heated and both passenger and driver seat are power. At least the recline function is power. It's a base model and it does all that. Hello back seats. Ooh, the door pockets are carpeted back here too. Huge fan of the carpeted door pockets. So when you have stuff in your door pocket and you're giving it the beans on a back road, you don't hear it rattling around inside your car because this thing is silent when you're driving it down the road. Really good insulation in here. The trim all around your infotainment system is piano black. A lot of people hate it because it get fingerprints on it and it scratches, but just put a clear bra over it and then you'll be good to go. And there's a little tweeter built into your armrest. I forgot to mention the sound system in here is on point for being a base model. It sounds good when you crank it up. Flat bottom steering wheel, the red stitching, red stitching on your shift boot, as well as the golf ball shaped shift knob. It's nice. And then the rip it style e-brake has piano black on it as well. That's prime spot to get fingerprints on it, but I don't care, it looks good. I will always love the little hexagonal shaped trim that they put on the dash and on your door cards, which have red LED lights that illuminate in them at night, as well as your door sills when you open the door. 
That's nice. All the lights in here are LED as well. The rest of the interior in here is perfect. It's got black headliner, so if you get crazy with ripping open your taco sauce packet, it doesn't matter because you won't see it if it splatters on the headliner. Although I recommend cleaning it off because then it'll stink like old hot sauce in your car and not new Volkswagen. I shall fold you down. Oh, there's another entrance. Oh, this is fun. Why in 2020 Volkswagen still uses this weird ass little 12 volt cigarette lighter looking thing by your cup holders is beyond me. And on top of weird plugs, down here near your shifter, the place where you plug in your smartphone because it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. No, it doesn't have a USB, it has a USY. Get it? Y as in, why would you put that there? It's not really, Never mind. When you have to explain a joke, it's no longer funny. Back seat's comfy, there's plenty of leg room back here. I'm not at all uncomfortable being 5'11 and the seat is positioned where it was when I was driving. Not bad, but there's no USB charge port back here. I wouldn't expect there to be one since it has a, a portal to another dimension up front. All right, let's take this thing for a rip. The gauges on here are straight business. You have indicators that perform functions and there's no frills to it. Also on the infotainment system, if you select media, I highly recommend plugging in a smartphone and tuning to Rammstein because it is all you should listen to when driving a GTI. Sorry. I would actually play it, but for copyright reasons, I can't. And the fact that I can't plug my phone into this thing because it has a dung beetle for a plug. In the name of science, I should now give it the beans. I'm going to disable trash control and keep it in sport mode. We'll give it a slight launch and uh, we'll see what this thing can do. Ready? Welcome to Garage Science with Sarah. Sorry, I don't know how to say that second part in German. I stopped doing Rosetta Stone after a month. Ooh. Anyway, powering this 2020 Volkswagen GTI is the EA888 Gen 3. It is a two liter turbocharged direct injected four cylinder that produces 228 horsepower at 4,700 RPM and 258 pound feet of torque at only 1500 rpm as far as four cylinder engines go this has to be one of my top favorites this engine makes a shit ton of power when you modify them what the hell this thing's got some cheat codes printed underneath the hood wonder what that unlocks oh i don't want to do this ready for the braking test no one behind me Oh geez. Oh, ooh, yeah. Salsa. I don't know why I just said salsa. They're uh they're decent brakes. I was actually expecting a little bit more because when you're driving this thing on a windy road, they're way more aggressive feeling. Just doing it in a straight line like that was kind of like, eh. Hello, welcome to Garage Lines round two. Now the drivetrain found in this GTI is the six speed manual transmission and you can get this with a seven speed dual clutch gearbox as well, which is another great choice. You can't go wrong either way with the automatic or the manual in this car. And that's very rare to find in any car. 
Now it does have a VAQ torque sensing limited slip differential that can transfer 100% of the power to the left or right wheel depending on where it needs to be, which minimizes torque steer. And I have to say this thing does not have that much torque steer. However, you can still tell it's front wheel drive when you turn off trash control and give it the beans because this thing will roast the ever living out of the front tires. It's awesome. So if you press the mode button down here by the shifter, there are four different settings. You have custom, eco, normal, and sport. Of course, I'm gonna have it in sport. Why else would I have it in anything else, especially on a windy back road? The traction control, there are two settings for that. You can turn it off, and there's also a sport mode, which limits stability control. All right, GTI on a back road and some twisty corners. How do you do? Oh my god, this is so good. Ooh, you can feel it shifting around right there. It's a tough choice between the six-speed manual and the DSG. DSG is really damn good, but so isn't the six-speed manual. Damn. See, the brakes aren't bad though when you're really getting on it. diverter valve over here on the left side so it like it almost sounds like an aftermarket blow-off valve brakes are good back end rotates a little bit actually when you brake come into a corner yeah back end rotates really good <laughs> If you guys have never seen one of my car reviews before, I have multiple categories to rate and assess vehicles that don't make sense to average human beings. However, I'm not very average, so it makes sense to me and we're going with it. First up is the bean score. It's a rating of one to five beans based on feeling you get your gut when you give it the beans. And the 2020 GTI with a six speed manual is gonna get a rating of two beans. Solid performance out of this thing, and especially for being under $30,000. It's a win. Next up is the cookie category. It is a rating of value, what you spend for what you get. And the GTI S with no options added to it is going to get a rating of three cookies. I'm giving it three because what used to be a performance package is now standard on this car. It does have some modern safety features and the interior in here is kind of high end looking and that's just typical Volkswagen and it smells like a Volkswagen. That has nothing to do with the rating though. Last up is the Penguin score. It has a rating of one to five penguins based on how I personally like this vehicle. And the GTI is going to get a rating of four penguins. I like this car a lot and it's up there tied with one of my favorite hot hatches. 
the Veloster N, which some people might argue is not really a hot hatch because it has a weird amount of doors and the back end looks like a chipmunk with seeds in its cheeks. But I do like this thing. Question is, should you get a Mark 8 when they come out or buy the last year of the 7? I say get the last year of the 7 because you're getting more things that were an option when the Mark 7 first came out as standard. And that will be true with the Mark 8. You're going to have to wait till the end of the Mark 8 to get all its fancy features standard. Anyway, I will see you guys soon with another video. Bye.